day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you, and I stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Therefore, let all the godly pray to you while there is still time, that they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. When we think of the word confession, many of us picture a little booth in the corner of a church where a priest waits to listen to people admit to their worst mistakes. And for many people, this is an everyday reality, a practical part of spiritual life. But not all Christians practice confession in this way. While confession of sins to a priest is a commonly recognized activity for Roman Catholics, the Protestant Reformation saw many Christians take hold of a prominent theme in the Bible, confessing sins directly to God. One of the most famous scriptures dealing with this theme is Psalm 51. It is one of the most powerful confessions in the Bible, and many Christians pray through this psalm when they feel aware of their sins. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. It is possible to receive forgiveness from God when confessing your sins to Him privately in your own prayer time. Some scriptures seem to suggest that unconfessed sins in one's own heart can become an obstacle to communication with God. But these passages also reassure us that God listens to our confessions and readily offers forgiveness. Confession is about adopting the right attitude about yourself, recognizing that you're not perfect and being willing to let God lead you back to the right path. But there are other versions of confession too. In the Hebrew Bible, there are many examples of corporate confession, when a nation collectively confesses their sins in general, or when an individual confesses the sins of their nation on behalf of everyone. In the book of Acts, we see new converts to Christianity confessing their former involvement in cults and magic arts, publicly renouncing their old practices before beginning a new way of life. We are told all throughout the Bible that if we wrong another person, we need to admit what we did to them and do whatever we can to make amends with them. But beyond this, the Bible also advises us to confess our sins to other believers even if they were not sins against them. We need to be real. Christians can be open with each other about their faults and shortcomings so that they can pray for each other and experience healing and forgiveness. Confessing in this way doesn't make God forgive us, but rather reminds us of our need for God's grace and God's willingness to give it. This last category can be uncomfortable if you are unsure that the people in your church community are trustworthy. Sadly, when Christians are not honest about their sinfulness, it makes it harder for everyone to acknowledge it. Christian fellowship is about finding and building relationships with trustworthy believers who you can share your struggles with, who will not judge you, and who will also be vulnerable with you. Together, Fellowship and confession help us by letting us be broken, imperfect works in progress with other sinners. The late priest Henry Nouwen said this, Laying down your life means making your own faith and doubt, hope and despair, joy and sadness, courage and fear available to others as ways of getting in touch with the Lord of life. I need my brothers or sisters to pray with me, to speak with me about the spiritual task at hand, and to challenge me to stay pure in mind, heart, and body. But far more importantly, it is Jesus who heals, not I. Jesus who speaks words of truth, not I. Jesus who is Lord, not I.